minute to play. Hood, double teamed off the pick and roll. Retreats out with the left hand, dribbles it off the foot of Hill. It rolls into the backcourt. He picks it up with five. He accelerates in the front court with four. He rises and fires with three. He hits the three and sinks the Pelicans. And the Jazz will win it tonight. 107-97 to score. Timeout, Alvin Gentry. Rodney Hood. You are locked on Jazz. Your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. It is Locked On Jazz for the 11th of July. What players might be attained in the upcoming week with the Boris Diaw contract? Rodney Hood better with Gordon Hayward off the floor? Why is that? We'll look at that, plus our first summer league breakdown. We'll look at Joel Pollenboy. It's all coming up on today's edition of Locked on Jazz. Pow! How are you? I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider. This is Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Everything about your favorite team. Subscribe on iTunes or your Android, or now available for you on Spotify, and it should be available as well on the David Locke YouTube channel. We'll see how that works out. That's a new addition as well for you. So hopefully Spotify and YouTube make it easier for you uh, to get the daily podcast, and hope you enjoy that. Uh, uh, Opened it up. We'll give you a bunch of things we'll talk about. I think I I hit them there for you. Uh, Today's show is brought to you by Murdoch Hyundai. The good people over at Murdoch Hyundai have got great deals for you in July and also for you, brought to you by SeatGeek, the number one way for you to get your tickets to any upcoming event with the promo code L-O-N-B-A, a new promo code for you, L-O-N-B-A. I want to hit on something I kind of alluded to yesterday and then I didn't get to, which is my bad, uh, and that is Dennis Lindsay was on with NBA TV and had a, had a really interesting comment about what he wants out of players. He wants players uh, that are smart, uh, that are, uh, I think his, his first one was that they were smart, that they were good people, and that they had a love for the game. And the philosophy there is that if they are smart, then they can learn the Quinn system and and deal with it. If they're good people, they'll be teammates, you have chemistry. And if they love the game, they can get through the grind that is the 82-game schedule that is so difficult uh, to deal with. So I thought it was a really interesting comment from Dennis Lindsay about smart, good, and love. Smart people, good people who love the game. That was, he brought that up on NBA TV. He began to allude to it in a really good interview with DJ and PK yesterday on 1280 The Zone, uh, but never quite went so far as saying it again. But it's worth just kind of grabbing onto, holding, and realizing uh, that that's, you know, a huge philosophy behind what what Dennis is doing. So yesterday we ran through uh, a bunch of players free agents possibilities for the Jazz. Uh, the next step is who could they possibly add to their roster um, really at this point either via trade and then the one piece they have to trade is that Boris Diaw's contract is non-guaranteed up to July 15th. So I, I can't imagine that we're going to pay um, – Boris Diaw, seventeen or seven million dollars next year. I just don't particularly. Uh, there's a possibility we might have considered it prior, uh, but I, I don't think there's any way we would do it now. Like where where we sit right now is thing. So I, I think that's um, the first one. Now, second part. So the question then is, can we trade Boris Diaw? to a team that's got financial issues between now and then um, and and get get a player we're interested in. And I've tried to run down uh, who those players would be. So uh, before I do that, though, I wanted to point out one player I didn't mention 
yesterday that I think's a Jazz possibility because I actually just think the Jazz like him. Uh, Nikolai Miritich. Nikolai Miritich is a restricted free agent. I don't know what the Jazz can do in regards to uh, making him an offer that the Bulls wouldn't match. But I, the Bulls the Bulls don't really need him. He's got a bad relationship with him. So that might be worth a flyer uh, in here a little bit. Now, the way our roster is, that would really turn um, Joe Johnson into a small forward. But, again, as we talked about Joe Johnson, his, his position's a little different than maybe what we talked about. Uh, that we than what we talked about prior, uh, and, and there are these kind of there's just a ton of these Terrence Jones kind of power forwards that aren't that great that take a roster spot and and may, Ersan Ilyasova I think is an unrestricted free agent that if you want to you could fill our roster with and then Joe Johnson slides to three and that's how you deal with some of those minutes. Um, but we really have that minute gap that we talked about yesterday that at some point here has to get solved. And maybe the two ways I didn't talk about enough to solve it are you add a stretch four, slide Joe Johnson down to the three, or another one I'll bring up is you add a, a point guard and then Exum becomes solely a two-three player to fill those possibilities. So the, I didn't probably bring that up enough yesterday as possibilities uh, for the Jazz. So so that's why I wanted to mention Miritich, and then I'll give you a different name uh, in here. Now, uh, let's uh, that name, by the way, actually I'll just go to it, is Nando DiColo. Uh Nando DiColo was with the Spurs for a while, I think originally drafted by Dennis. I don't know all of his circumstances, but he's 30 years old, 6'5". He's really kind of a 1-2 point guard. He has been playing for Seska Moscow. He's been really, really good uh, in European basketball. I don't know if he's interested in coming back. His name's floated around a little bit. Uh, he's been back in Moscow since 2014, and he's been good. Uh, I, he's, he's improved. He's been shooting the three at, an, at a really, really high rate. But that would be a player where the Jazz could bring him in as a backup 1-2, slide Exum to a 2-3, and then uh, maybe that's the way that you saw Mitchell plays a 1-2. You know, Again, you, you don't want guys fighting for too many minutes. We just don't have enough minutes uh, on the roster. Uh, one other player under the Nikolai Miritich I didn't mention yesterday that's probably worth mentioning is Jonas Jerebko. Uh Jerebko... Uh, originally was with Detroit, uh, tore his Achilles tendon, fought through that pretty well, played with Boston for the last three seasons, and is a pretty darn good player. Uh, he's 6'10", really, again, that kind of stretch four. Maybe you could play him as a little three. Uh, we have a little more luxury because of Rudy on some of these things. So that's another name out there. And then... A final name, it was just a just a nice solid player, is Gerald Henderson. Uh, Gerald Henderson Jr., not Gerald Henderson Sr. Um, he's been in Charlotte. He's in, he's really a mid heavy. Got criticized a lot as a heavy mid range player, but last year in Philadelphia he became a little bit better. He actually shot thirty five percent from three in the last two seasons in Portland, Philadelphia. He's been bouncing around. And he's six five, so he's he's to me really a primarily two, but he's a good veteran player who knows how to play well you could give minutes to. Um and I think would be uh would be fine. He was waived by the seventy sixers. Oh, wait a s uh yeah, he was waived by the seventy sixers on July first, so he's he's available. So those are so four names I, I probably forgot to mention yesterday in the free agents, Gerald Henderson, Nikolai Miritich, Jonas Jerebko, Nando DiColo, and then the wild card is Michael Beasley. And the reason I didn't mention those was probably a little roster, uh, rigid, being a little rigid with the roster. Uh, and and you could probably take those uh, and then give us the flexibility I was talking about. All right, before I jump into possibilities of trades, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Murdoch Hyundai. 1.99% is an incredible deal that they have for you right now 
uh, on July uh, for your financing. Uh, Murdoch in July, 1.99% financing. I, I'm not sure you'll ever see a better rate. So one of the, all fact, you keep all the factory rebates and you still get 1.99%. Murdoch Hyundai partnering with Golden West Credit Union for this offer. That's how they're able to do it. And by the way, it's for new and used. Then this is kind of the essence of the Murdochs. All the pro, uh, the, Proceeds from your new or used car purchase will be donated to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. So, um, you know, th- what this means is you get up to $6,000 off a 2017 Tucson. That's what I'm driving right now. 2017 Santa Fe uh, until uh, now until July 24th. Plus, you get 1.99% financing. Plus, they're donating uh, to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. So it's pretty cool. It's kind of the essence of everything I've told you about what's going on uh, with Hyundai. And then, of course, you get the Hyundai Assurance. You receive the best 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, the Hyundai Assurance. Uh, now, until Pioneer Day, Murdoch Hyundai is giving you 250,000-mile warranty. So that's incredible. So not only do you get the regular Murdoch Hyundai deal, but then be, uh, until now, Murdoch, or excuse me, the regular Hyundai deal, Hyundai insurance, you're getting that pa- pa- added on 250,000 miles. Come on in, Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Linden, and in Murray. Get started at MurdochHyundai.com. I've been driving the Tucson and the Santa Fe. Really have, have been impressed uh, by all the things you get and all the features that are available to you in all of these cars. Go check it out. Add Murdoch Hyundai to your list of places you might stop by. All right, let's... So the way this works is that Boris Diaw's contract expires and the uh, is not is not guaranteed up to July 15th. So if the Jazz trade Boris Diaw in the next three days to someone, they just waive him. They have no money on their books. So then who are the teams that have money issues? Washington, Oklahoma City, the Clippers, and the Bucks are the four primary teams that have money issues right now where they're over the cap. So in the case of Washington, I don't know what Washington's plan is, but Washington is paying out Bradley Beal, Mammoth money, $25 million a year, Otto Porter, 26 John Wall, they're willing to pay more at 16 Yami Himi is at 16 we're not interested. Martin Gortat is at $12 million, we're not interested. Markeith Morris is pretty interesting. He's at $8 million a year on an incredible contract. He can play a 3-4 probably for you. He's a free agent in 2019, so you're taking two years at $8 million, and you could do that deal, and that deal would come awfully close to bringing Washington under the tax. So Markeith Morris is a pretty interesting name there. Jason Smith has two years left on his deal. I'm not sure that that moves the meter. Thomas uh, Tomas Sadoransky has two years left on his deal at $3 million. I'm not sure that moves the meter. They just signed Jody Meeks. Kelly Oubre is a young talent the Jazz were intrigued with before, but he's only at $2 million, so it probably doesn't get enough done to get them. So Markeith Morris is a name to keep an eye on there. Oklahoma City, pushing up against the tax a little bit. Probably would like to get under it. What can they do? Oklahoma City, Stephen Adams at 25. They're not going to move. Paul George is not going to move. Russell Westbrook, 25. Ennis Cantor, 17. Andre Robertson, they just signed at 10. Kyle Singler is at 4.7. Signed through 2020. It's not a bad contract. Um... Actually, I think he signed through 2018, but he's not an unrestricted free agent until 2020. He signed him to a four-year, $19 million deal. Uh, I don't love Kyle Singler. Um, He's not terrible, though. He can float between the three and the four. He's not the... um, Last year, he only played 32 minutes. He was really out of their rotation a little bit. He was originally drafted in the... Uh, third pick of the second round by Detroit. He averaged 10 points a game. Looked like he was kind of heading somewhere. Since then, it hasn't been as good. Last year, he really didn't shoot it well. He hasn't shot it well in two seasons. 36% three-point shooter. He's averaged 16, 17, 18 minutes a night. Could probably fit the little bit of our, our issue. 
not not going to wow you in any way, but that's a possibility. Uh, we've always liked Alex Abrinas, who's 24 years old, had a decent year last year. He's not a free agent until 2019. Um, I'd be surprised if OKC wants to give him up, but they might be a little desperate. Doug McDermott, interesting possibility. He's at two point seven million. You have him on his rookie contract. He'd be on his third team. He can kind of play a three four. I know some people in the Jazz organization really liked him out of the draft. I'm not sure I love him, but he's a career thirty nine percent three point shooter. He hasn't taken his seven hundred fifty threes yet, so I'm not sure what that number is. An abnormally good second year in the league. Last year he was a little less good, but that's a possibility. Uh, if that's a contract that they are trying to move to get under the tax. And otherwise, there that's about it for Oklahoma City. Uh, the Bucks, Milwaukee's hovering right around the tax. So who do the Bucks have? Giannis at 25, they're not going to give that up. Chris Middleton at 14, they're not giving that up. Greg Monroe at 17. Um, and unless we think we have some huge package we could go offer for Chris Middleton. Um, who's a heck of a player. But I'd be very surprised if Washington, if Milwaukee's moving that. But you never know. Um, Greg Monroe's at 17. We're probably not interested. John Henson's not a great contract at 12. We're not probably not interested. Tony Snell was just signed at 11. Del Vadova with Ricky Rubio doesn't fit. Toledovich has got two years left at $10 million. That's a bad contract by Milwaukee. That solves their problem. That solves our problem. And are they? would they be willing to give up a first-round draft pick? Could you get a pick for taking that contract? Toledovich is a gunner. Not much of a defensive presence. Shot 39% from Phoenix from three. This guy was taking 10 shots in 21 minutes. He took six last year in 16 minutes. He's a, he's a high-usage rate. Shooter. Um, his usage rate was 23% in Phoenix. It was 20% in Milwaukee. $10 million a year, to me, is a bad deal on him at 31 years old. But he, he would fit some of our needs and would be interesting in whether or not um, the Jazz could garner. You're taking $20 million. $20 million, I think, is the price for a first-round draft pick at this point. Uh so that's and that's the only player uh, that gets them under their Spencer Hawes. You could take their five million; it might help them. And you, but you, you'd want a pick or something of that sort. And then there's the Clippers, who really have almost nobody other than Wesley Johnson. Who, if you're trying to get someone under the tax, uh, Wesley Johnson's at five million. That would probably help them. Lou Williams is a player we looked in the past, but the way our rosters with Donovan Mitchell, I don't think we're interested in that any longer. And nobody else has enough money. Wesley Johnson, <clears throat> fairly, he's he's signed through 2019, too. He's got two more years left at 30. Doesn't move the meter. Other players you might be able to to do something with possibilities. I'm just throwing a, would Denver move Wilson Chandler? $11 million, would do we want him? Through 2019, I like him in a lot of ways. He's 30, uh, he could score for us. He might get a little shot happy, but that's a possibility. Uh, out of Denver, he signed through 20, he's a free agent in 2019, so you'd have him for two seasons. Wild card here, the Lakers need to clear money. The Jazz, how, what would the Lakers, and they don't have a lot of pieces, what would the Lakers give up if the Jazz were willing to eat the Luel Dang contract, which is $18 million a year would push the Jazz off in the tax, take away a lot of flexibility. Free agencies in 2018 is not great, but if you're on a – could. Could you get two first-round picks somehow um, out of that? I don't, I don't know if that would, would move the meter uh, enough. I'm going to throw another name out there. He doesn't really match our roster a lot, but he's a player that I think the Jazz have always liked. I kind of like guys that got beat up and bullied in Sacramento um, and wonder if they might come back around. Nick Stauskas is uh, a player that, is earning three point one million in Philadelphia signed through next year. I don't know uh if they have a real role for him or are that interested in him, but that's a player. Um and that again then you're you're 
you're adding kind of another one two, and you're just sliding some guys down. We're going to be smaller than we usually would be. But with the addition of Korkmaz and Timothy Luau, and they have T.J. McConnell as a nice backup point guard, and they have Simmons and Fultz that maybe they're done with Stauskas. Stauskas has not been great and may not be an NBA player of <clears throat> regular rotation NBA player. But there have been some signs played 27 minutes a game last year, 37% shooting. Effective field goal percentage was right on the league average. There's some signs that the longer he's out of Sacramento, uh, that he's coming around a bit. All right. Show today is brought to you by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is uh, the number one place for you to get tickets to any upcoming event. Go to your phone right now and download the SeatGeek app. Go to the settings tab and enter in a promo code L-O-N-B-A. That's the new promo code, L-O-N-B-A. You'll get $20 back off your first purchase. You can do it for any upcoming event in town. I mentioned Amos Lee is coming to town on Thursday. I've got my price alert for that one that I'm keeping an eye on, Uh, hoping that there's a chance that I can get to go to that on Thursday when I on the day I fly back from NBA meetings in Vegas. And the best part about it is that they compile all the tickets from all the areas, so I don't have to go check three other sites like I used to and see what's what the ticket availabilities are. I'm a huge U2 fan. Do I want to go to a national event? What I like about this is I go check their schedule and see where is it. If I want to go see them in Berlin, Germany, it's going to be $3,000. That's probably not going to work out for me um, a great deal. But they're coming back in September at Ford Field in Detroit, and those tickets are only $116. Or I can get to New York for only $64. So maybe in early September I surprise my wife and fly her to New York. All do it with the help of SeatGeek. And the best part is SeatGeek gives every ticket a ticket score, and then I know which of the best deals for me. Maybe I'll fly to Minnesota on February 8th to see you two and surprise the wife uh, with that. All doing it through SeatGeek and using the promo code L-O-N-B-A, I get a $20 rebate. So right now, download the SeatGeek app, go to the settings tab, enter the promo code L-O-N-B-A, and you'll be ready for your next purchase. So this is interesting. And we'll talk more about it. By the way, our Summer League update on um, Ball and Boy will happen another day. I've run out of time. Gordon Hayward off the floor. Rodney Hood on the floor. The, The Jazz are less good as a team. Okay, when they had them both on the floor, they were plus five. When Hood was on the floor and Hayward was off, they were plus 2.8. What's interesting, by the way, in almost all of these, is when you go take Gordon Hayward off the floor and you pro- and you still have Rudy on, I think, in most of these cases, we're still positive. It's why there's a bunch of metrics that actually have the Jazz coming out really good next year. When Rudy Gobert and Gordon Hayward were on the floor together, the Jazz were plus nine. When Hayward was off with just Gobert, we're plus four. So we're still really good. That's what the metrics are all pointing to. Um, it's going to take me a little while to get my ha- head wrapped around this idea. Uh, the other one that's interesting is that a bunch of our players played better when Gordon was off the floor, which I'm not totally buying, frankly. Um, when Rodney was on and Gordon was off, with favors we were negative. So that's um, – and Joe Ingles we were negative. So it's – it's not overwhelming, but there's some interesting things here. So I, I guess I'm trying to make sure we don't suddenly <clears throat> take this. Tour. So Rodney Hood's usage rate goes from 20% to 28%, which is really high. And he gets better. He shoots 46%. When Hayward was on the floor, he shot 37 so nine percentage points better. His three-point shooting goes 42% to 34%. So he's... Eight points better from three-point shooting. He doesn't shoot a great deal more free throws. A little bit more, though. Um, His assists are not great because he's, frankly, not passing at that point. He's scoring. Uh, And as I mentioned, the team stuff. But Rodney, his assist rate when – do I have it? I may not have that. I thought I did. Sorry, don't have – oh, yeah, no, his assist rate – is down to 8.5% when Hayward's on the floor to 13%. And um, But his usage rates from 28 to 20. His true shooting percentage is 57 compared to 48. So Rodney gets better. It's a little surprising. Uh, I'm not 
it makes some sense. Rodney likes to play with the ball in his hands. Rodney likes to uh, and, and lets him work where he wants to. Gives him some freedom. Ingles, the team with Joe and Gordon on the floor, are were plus nine point three when he's off. It's minus two. So it doesn't parlay there as much. It seems to go to Rodney. Uh, Go- uh, Ingles shoots two percentage points better with Gordon off the floor and four percentage points from three better when Gordon's off the floor. It's interesting. Gordon may not, I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised by this. I don't have to look into it. I don't, I'm not buying it. I, I'm relaying the numbers without a lot of buy-in, frankly. Uh, the assist rate for Ingles goes down when Hayward's off the floor. He was a 30% assist rate when Hayward was on, a 24% when he's off. He defensive rebounds better when Hayward's off. His effective field goal percentage was up a little bit. His true shooting percentage and his usage rate's up a little bit. Joe's usage rate just at 14%. It's worth just, we'll see. What's interesting is the defense when Hayward was on the floor, when Hayward and Hood are on the floor, the defensive rating with Hayward and Hood was 101. Hayward on the floor goes to 105. So it's actually a defensive loss is where that's most obvious. It's a little interesting. All right, we'll do some more Summer League breakdowns. I'm heading to Vegas. I'll be in Vegas tomorrow morning. I'll do my best to get a show out. No promises. we got a bunch of meetings and timing and some things that might be a little difficult to get that done, but I'll do the best. Um... Uh, I can. That is Locked On Jazz today, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, now available for you on Spotify. This should be up on YouTube as well. We'll see if that works. Today's the first day for that. And it's brought to you by Murdoch Hyundai, 1.99% financing from them, plus all the factory rebates still available for you at Murdoch Hyundai. And finally and last, the... Uh, brought to you by SeatGeek with the promo code L-O-N-B-A. That's L-O-N-B-A. This has been Locked on Jazz, part of the Locked on Podcast Network.